in today's section. So this is soft skills masterclass for students. As you have always heard, my name is Abiola Sondia Okesi. We trust others will join us as we, as we proceed in today's class. As an introduction to what we are looking at today, which is another dimension of etiquette, we'll be looking at the story of a young boy who is known as Alfred. Alfred happened to be a brilliant boy in his school. The school, virtually all the students in the school have made him the school president in their mind. Surprisingly, when he got to SS2, the school actually put together a panel of committee to interview, to look into and carry out a survey among can you mute yourself, please? Can you please mute your mic? Can you please mute your mic? Okay, thank you. So as I was saying, this is a story of a young boy known as Alfred, who happened to be a very brilliant boy in his school, and how the students in the school have virtually all the students have made him the school president in their mind. So the school put together a panel of committee to uh, carry out a survey among the school, among the students in the school, to so know their choice, to understand their, their mind about who they would like to choose to become the school president. On the very day of election, it was surprised to even the management that Alfred lost to his classmate, who is actually a female called Nancy. So the school management came together and they were curious that even the young boy who has been the choice, the, the, the mental choice of the school management and also the choice of a large number of his students lost to Nancy. And they found that Alfred had lack basic etiquette which is the, a, a crucial aspect of ethical, which is awareness of others. And awareness of others is one of the essential attributes of a leader. If Alfred is going to be the president of his school, it is expected that Alfred would not be someone who does not have the awareness of others. It is expected that Alfred would take others into consideration when he is in school, when he's leading as a president, or when he behaves in his attitude towards his teacher. So it is expected of Alfred to act and behave in the best possible manner. And that's where we are still looking at the topic today, a etiquette of manners and conduct. This is the fifth series in today's soft skills masterclass. So by the end of this course, we trust that students will be able to understand what is etiquette, which we have looked at in the previous class, the kinds of etiquette, the application of the rules of etiquette, the ways to improve the rules of right behavior, which is the last objective for today. So the quote for today is, good manners will open doors that the best education cannot. Don't forget that in the introductory story, we learned about the story of Alfred, who happened to be uh, a young student who is brilliant academically. But the challenge was of Af Alfred was that he lacked manners, and manners as regarding awareness of others. He lacked an aspect of education which he couldn't get through school education. As I'm here in the definition of education here. I'm sorry about that. So good manners will open doors that the best education cannot. That is according to a Clarence Thomas. So the definition of etiquette, which we have also looked at, is etiquette is a standard of good manner and polite behavior. 
When you look at the word standard, it simply means a measurement. It simply means a way to put a check on your behavior. So it simply means it is like a constitution that guides the way you think, the way you reason, the way you act and behave towards others. And that's why we said it's a standard, a measurement of good manner and polite behavior. And the word good manner and polite behavior simply means that the way with which you carry out your action to yourself and others is good in the sense that it promotes good relationship. It promotes peaceful relationship. It helps yourself and the others to grow and live peaceably in whatever situation you find yourself. And that's why we continue where we stop. Number 23, we are talking about awareness of others. Awareness of others. If you look at the picture before us, you identify that there are uh, two persons who are looking at uh, one of the colleagues or one of the staff of a company who looked confused, who looked worried. So they were looking in a bid to, because they are aware of what the other person might be going through. For example, as a young student, mommy just comes home or daddy comes home and it looks worried, it looks tired. The understanding of the awareness of others we demand that you ask, hi mom, how has been your day? You look worried, hope all is well. How can I be of help to you? So these are words that shows that you have awareness of others. And what is awareness of others? Awareness of others refers to the act of knowing how one can be of help to the other person. We always find one or two persons around us on the internet in school who have need of our help in one way or the other. Recently, I saw the message of one of my junior students back in school who made a comment, and the comment shows that there is a possibility that is going through hard times, that things are not going very well with him. And I had to put a call through to him and give him consoling words, which he said he was very grateful for. So awareness of others shows that you have a sense of protection towards others. What is the work of a leader? If a leader does not show a sense of protection towards others, if you are the and by a sense of protection, we said what is the use of a leader? who does not have a sense of protection towards others. Because the number one, a function of a leader, of the president of the school, which Alfred was elected, was to be chosen to be. What is the essence, what will be the essence of being elected when you do not have a sense of protection towards others? One of the most important function of the state of government is to protect the rights of the citizen. So when you are privileged to be are chosen to function in a leadership position. Their number one responsibility is to have a sense of protection towards others. Number two is one is not self-centered. So having awareness of others means not being self-centered, not focusing on yourself, not prioritizing your own view, your own you know, food more than the others, of which is uh, a wrong uh, way of living. It also shows that one, it ensures that one does not use awful words to address others. So how is the awareness of others manifested in a young man? Number one is that when he or she is working with his friends, with his mother, with his parents, he ensures that he walks, he, he slows his pace, his walking steps. When he's working, he's not you know, in a hurry to you know, walk ahead of others. Number two is he avoids the use of harsh speech, harsh words. So having affection for others, having a sense of uh, awareness of others shows that you do not use harsh words. You use a word a not of a sentence that are graceful. You use positive language if you have awareness of others. Number two, number three is that awareness of others shows that you do not, you know, speak too loud to distract others or you do not turn up your music system to distract others when you are having a nice time. Another point here is that it does not become a gluton. 
it does not take a large portion of the food without consideration for others. For example, if you happen to be a firstborn in a family and because you have a big tummy and you love eating food, and as a result of this, you have the privilege to you know, go to the port to uh, serve yourself. Those who have affection for others will serve themselves with consideration to ensure that they have the leftover food in the pot will be sufficient for others. Number five is that he is not prideful or boastful. Those who are living in pride, if you are the best in your class and pride overwhelms you, if you happen to be you know, from a rich family, and as a result of that, pride has taken over you. This is against the rule of etiquette. And it is against the understanding of the awareness of others. Those who are living in pride cannot become a great leader. Number six is he finds an umbrella for his mom or sister or friends when they are in the rain. Do not forget, this is close to what we talked about, what it shows having a sense of protection towards others. He also helps us to carry you know, every load, especially when he's able to carry for parents, for elderly people that he or she finds around. Number 24 that we are looking at today is grooming. Grooming is a public, a public activity, not something that should be done in the open. And grooming in the public is an improper habit of dressing in the public, which is against the rule of etiquette, because grooming is a private matter, not a public you know, um, habit. It is something that should be done in the public. It involves wearing of clothes. It involves you know, picking of hairs in the public is wrong. Wearing of clothes in the public is wrong. Coming of hair in the public is wrong, especially when you are in a restaurant or, or, or at a cafe where you, are, you, you, you happen to bring your comb out and you're coming, you're here where everyone is sitting. This is against the rule of etiquette because hair can be found in what others are eating. So brushing of teeth and others in the public is something that is against the rule of etiquette. It is to be done in the private uh, scene. Cutting of nails in the public is also against the rule of etiquette. Number 25 is that when parent comes home, what should be your attitude? Still looking at the rule of etiquette, when mom, when dad, when you come home, do not forget if you are just joining, kindly mute yourself. So when your parent comes home, either from a, uh, a journey or traveling or coming from the market, what should be your attitude? Number one is that you need to understand that parents expect children to treat them with courteous treatment. When they come home from work or from traveling, they expect that you greet them with pleasant attitude and cheerfulness. It should not be the time when you are frowning, you are reporting, you are and nagging, you should uh, show an attitude of greeting like uh, you're welcome mom or dad, how has been your day? I hope you had a splendid day. This gives them a sense of belongingness. It helps them to you know, feel happy that that's possibly they have had a an hard day. They find someone who is concerned about them. Number two is that their both should be complemented with acceptable cultural greeting styles. For example, among the Yoruba, it is expected that a boy prostrates for an elderly person. So for your mom, it is expected that you prostrate. And as a young girl, it is expected that you kneel down to greet an elderly person, your parents, or whoever that is responsible for your care. Number three is holding bad news until they have relaxed, until they have you know, had enough time to relax. So when they are coming home from a walk or from a journey, it should not be a time when you are relating bad news, the news about how your junior one or your elderly one maltreated you, how someone at home hurts you, or you are trying to relate the bad news, news that can you know, make them worry or feel more sad. So it is expected that you hold bad news until later. This is the rule of etiquette. You give them a sense of, you create an environment where they can relax, where, can, where they can feel happy and, you know, uh, take a little bit of rest and relax from the stress of the day. Number five is that not begging for gifts. It should not be a time when you are asking, where is my biscuits? Where is my uh, this or that? Or asking what they have promised you. You should ensure that they rest before that is done. You should also respect their likes and their dislikes. If you have been instructed to uh, carry out and house shirts, 
like uh like like disposing the waste bin like uh like uh ensuring that the house is put in order it is expected that you respect their instruction because this will give them a peace of mind it will give them the grace and opportunity you know to rest from the stress of the day and you will agree with me that whatever you ask from them they will be happy to give it to you because they found that you have been of great help you have been a great companion to them because one of the accents why our parents give birth to us is for us to be a companion is for us to ensure that we can always help each other just as parents help children it is expected that as a young person as a child in gss1 or ss3 that you be of help to them in return that is the beauty of life number 26 is as regarding allowance the allowance you receive from your parents you want to look at what should be your attitude to your use of the allowance that you are being given you want to look at how you should relate with them how you should uh spend how you should uh, how, sh how you should manage your allowances you need to understand as a young person that getting allowance from your parents is an opportunity to learn to manage money it is an opportunity also to enjoy your social obligation so it should not be something that is seen as 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 a demand from your parent that they must do this or they must do that so what are the rules that should guide your attitude as regarding allowing number one you should, you should see it as an opportunity to learn to save saving is one of these key to financial intelligence as a young person whatever age that you might be in you need to learn to save you need to learn to not you know squander all the money that you are being given you need to learn to you know save possibly uh, somewhere in your house or in a bank if possibly you have a bank account this is very important learn to save at the end of the month you, sh you should be able to uh, relate with mom or with dad that i have been able to save so and so amount of money at the end of the year you should be able to relate and feel happy that you have been able to save an amount of money at the end of the month the year or over a period of years number two is that you should never see it as as it is never a pay for work done your allowance should not be seen by you as a pay for work done you should not say or tell mom or dad that that you would only wash the plate you would only you know keep the room tidy if you get an amount of money that is very wrong it is against the rule of etiquette if you want something you should learn to wait long enough until you have enough amount enough money to purchase that particular thing which you want especially when it is not a need if it is a want a need is something that is urgent something that's very important it could be something like your book it could be something like materials that you need for examination these are needs which the parents would actually provide for but we are looking at things that are want. possibly you want to buy a toy possibly you want to buy uh a gift for yourself, something that would help you, not necessarily academically. These are the things that you need to learn to save enough money for before you buy them. This will help you to learn a great principle of financial success in life, which is the ability to delay gratification. A lot of students does not have the ability to delay gratification. A research was conducted by some researchers a couple of years ago. And in that research, they want to understand one of the secrets of success among uh, uh young people so they came up with marshmallow which are actually uh sweets so they put together a group of uh children and they asked them that which of you would rather take marshmallow now would take one marshmallow now or would wait until several hours and then you get two marshmallows majority of the students went after the immediate pleasure they went after just the one marshmallow, the, 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 the one sweet. So why the other group of students who were, who were patient enough for a longer period of time to get two marshmallows, for that future study shows that those who had the ability to delay their gratification were much more successful in the future than the young children who does not have the ability to delay gratification. So you, as a young person, you need to learn to delay gratification. It is one of the key to success in life. If you can say no to so the immediate pleasure for you to 
stay disciplined to pursue your future against. Number four is that it should serve as an opportunity to learn to give those charity. One of the principles of life is that you give to go up. Those who don't learn to give, don't go up. They don't go far in life. So when you get your allowance, possibly your parents give you 200 dera, possibly they give you 500 naira, possibly they give you 100 dera. Each day you go to school, learn to save. As a result of this, when you go to your religious place of service, learn to give, learn to donate, learn to give to the less privileged. This is one of the essential basis of life. Why? Because your ability to live under your parents is a privilege. No children make this choice. So you should learn to give to others through your savings, not necessarily and always what you get from your parents. Number five, you should learn that it is easier to spend the money you don't have than the money you have. When you have saved up for several days or several months or years, you would learn that it is very hard to you know, spend out of that your hard, uh, long saved money than the money you didn't really work for. It is a crucial financial intelligence. Number seven is as regarding television. What should be our attitude towards television when we have a visitor? How should we relate? How should we comport ourselves when our parents have visitors at home? There are, there are rules and guides that young students need to obey when it comes to the use of television, which is a good source of information that can also serve as a good source of distraction. As a young student, you need to learn that a television, social media can be a great source of distraction. The billionaire Bill Gates was asked a couple of years ago. It was asked that we heard that you don't watch television. And in, it, in the answer of Bill Gates, it shows that it doesn't really watch a television. But the popular saying that those who have been looked at don't look indiscriminately. Just like the footballers on the football pitch, they don't, they, 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 they don't, they, they don't, they are disciplined on the football pit. They are disciplined with their focus, in their focus. They are never distracted in any way. So one of the greatest distractions which you need to be guided about is your use of television. So examples of the rules that you need to place upon yourself when it comes to the use of television is that when you have a personal visitor or a friend comes to visit you, you need to learn that you need to pay attention to your visitor. You shouldn't let the television take over of your attention such that your visitor loses your attention. Number two, you shouldn't drag the TV station to be watched with your visitor. You should respect the fact that your visitor came to visit you for a limited period of time. So your respect to the visit of this person is your ability to you know, give the person enough space to explore what is available for him or her in uh, your at, at your home. Number three is that it is wrong for your attention and attachment to television to compete with your parents' attention. At, attention rather. Whenever you are asked to carry out an activity, whenever you are asked to go on an errand, whenever you are asked to do an house shops, I hope your attention or attachment to the television does not compete with your parents' attention. You need to learn to discipline yourself such that, number four, you do not, you are not controlled by television, that you exert control over it. Whenever your parents have a visitor, you're expected to lower the television, the, the, the volume of the TV that only you can hear so that you don't become a source of distraction to your parents. Number five, the last one is that television should be your servants, just as social media should be your servants. You shouldn't be a servant to the social media, to the television, to the TV programs. So you should learn that the television is, should be an instrument of functioning. It should be a means of getting yourself educated. It should be a means of you learning to know what is happening in the world, what is happening around you, and not make yourself a servant to the television. This is very important because what you spend your time with determines what becomes of you in life. So if you spend five hours, six hours before your TV, the question is that what have you accomplished before that TV, that, that particular day? 
So you need to ensure that you discipline yourself, that you don't become a servant of technology, that technology is your servant. And the last point that we'll be looking at today is frightening others. Frightening others is a critical and a dangerous habit which a young person needs to, to learn to avoid in life. I'll be playing a short video which, which I would like us to pay attention to. It shows the negative effect of frightening others. So when you are playing in school, when you are playing with your friends, with your junior or elderly ones, how dangerous can it be when you engage in frightening others or what is uh, often called as pranking? others it's something that as a young student you need to uh, learn to avoid it is very uh, dangerous uh, it is a uh, very dangerous uh you need to understand that number one the reason why you need to avoid frightening others is because it can go wrong and it can also lead to fatal and ghastly accidents and many students, as a result of this, uh, have you know, lost their limb. They have lost a part of body as a result of a rough play. So you need to learn to avoid this, playing with your uh, younger ones, playing with your elderly ones in a way to you know, amuse yourself. You need to learn to avoid this. And do not forget the quote for today is, good manners will open doors that the best education cannot. Good manners will open doors that the best education cannot. I'm sorry for the definition of uh, uh, definition of education yet as an error there. So good manners will all will open doors that the best education cannot, according to Clarence uh, Thomas. So the discussion for today will be around: uh, Can you narrate a situation in the past where you have showed awareness for others? Who would like to speak? We have around six minutes. Who is speaking? A situation in the past where you have showed awareness for others. I would like a uh, honey deal, honey deal drops. Who is that? Can you please uh, uh, introduce yourself and possibly tell us a situation in the past where you have showed awareness for others? Okay, can another person speak, please? Any other person? Mukhtar, are you there? Mr. Emmanuel Oladeji, are you there? A situation, a scenario in the past where you have showed awareness for others. Don't forget we talked about awareness for others is the act of showing concern for others. The act of identifying a need in the life of others and making the attempt to be of help. And we said this is a crucial attribute of a leader, of someone who is going to become a great leader in the future. This is also one of the ways to identify a need which can become your purpose in life. It's one of the ways to identify the business opportunity, awareness for others who would like to speak. Mr. Emmanuel Ladiji said, this is a great lecture. Uh, God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. We really appreciate your uh, comments. Is there any person who would like to tell us how he or she 
has shown awareness for others. And Mukta, can you please unmute yourself and speak? And if not, if you have not shown awareness for the others, kindly identify no. You have less than five minutes. How I have showed awareness for others, if I'm to speak, I told us in the introductory story that I have a junior school student who made a comment on Facebook, which shows that he was going through hard times, possibly depression. And I had to put a call through to him to you know, comfort him, to give him words that can um, get him strengthened and deliver him from uh, the emotional trauma that he might be going through. So just like we said, awareness for others is the ability to show the concern for others. It can be to your parents. It can be that mom has been working, you know, all day. And you look at how you can be of help to them. One of the greatest lessons about showing awareness for others is an identification of the problem in your environment. I learned about a family who were living in a community where there, uh, where, where there was no uh, water. And when they got there, they discovered that this is a problem in their community. A lot of people in that community were suffering from the problem lack of clean water. And guess what they did? That was what made them start a pure water manufacturing business in that estate, in that community. So awareness for others can be of great help in diverse ways. It can be what would help you to identify a business opportunity in your environment. It can be what will smoothen your relationship. When you grow old and you become someone who wants to get married, you need to ensure that you have awareness for others. You are aware of the situation, the difficulties, the good time, the bad time that the other person are going through. This will help you to become a good you know, husband, a good wife. This will help you to identify a need, identify a business opportunity in your environment. So I'd like to say thank you for being part of today's class. I would like to ask, is there anyone who has a question? Is anybody who has a question? Okay, Mrs. Artutu said, I do remind and encourage my friends about lecture updates, most especially when they don't feel like. That is a good attitude of awareness for others, trying to encourage others when they lack courage, trying to give information to others where they may not be informed. Do not forget that when you are not informed, you will be deformed. Thank you for being part of this class. We uh, really appreciate it. Don't forget we said that from next week, we'll be having uh, uh, different speakers who will be coming on board to speak to us to so further strengthen our understanding of soft skills that will become the creator of the life that we desire. Thank you for being part of this class. Don't forget, my name is Abdullah Soria. Okay, see you again. Uh, have a splendid uh, weekend. Thank you.